Council has done, we have been committed to, uh, to understanding the transport needs of the, of the island. The social data survey was the largest survey ever undertaken by a local government in relation to transport movements. A social economic study made a big difference to the outcomes of the, uh, of the plan. The tender for car share went out, uh, and, but the tender for car share is going to be revisited uh, and uh, more tenders invited. Car park improvements, we've done the Miser Street and Barge Street and we're now cleaning up the cenotaph. Yet to go is the interior and the lighting. We've also done a market sounding exercise which I'll refer to in a moment. So I think I've demonstrated a commitment, an ongoing commitment to, the, to you to be able to bring your issues both to other councillors but also to state and federal government. And we did that. We brought the senators over here so that we could get a better access to funding from the federal government. Because people don't know, you talk about islands, and they all think it's somewhere like Bribie or Hayman Island, where everybody is um, you know, sitting there rolling in the dough, just having a great time. Bring people over, they can see the beauty of the islands, they can see the opportunities of the islands, but they can also see some of the issues. And that's a really important factor in one of those stress problems. We need to get people over here. So what will I do in relation to those three particular projects? The joint venture with Council. Council can't just go out and tap someone on the top shoulder or someone comes to us and says, I want to do something with Council, as has happened. We were approached by the private, operator, private sector operator and with some ideas. We then decided, well, we need to look at who's out there, what are the ideas that people might have, what do they want? What do they want council to give them? What do they want the community to What are they prepared to give the community? And we did that market sounding. And the, the results of that is coming to council. We've come to the new term of council. Because council has to get some idea of what are the, what, what's the private operator pr uh, offering? Are there permits required? Because as you know, when you're in a marine environment, you've got a permit for this and a permit for that from different government departments. So that that's the, and can take a long time. For us to get a dredging permit, we allow two to three years to get a dredging permit. So we need to understand what the private operator might be doing. And we're doing that, and that market sounding comes back to council. Anything that involves permits, as I said, will take a long time. So we needed to have an interim, not so much an interim, but a solution in the short to medium term to allow that market sounding, that development opportunity, permits from government, because we don't own all the land. And we need to seek permission from government to use that. Can private sector build on it if they need to? What are all of the issues that are raised there? So that issue is still uh, to be resolved, and you'll be informed as soon as council is able to have a look at it in detail. I think this is an exciting possibility, expensive, but I can tell you what, none of them, none of them are cheap. Being a multi deck, we seem to have three. We have a multi deck car park, which we may need anyway. We can have alternate barge routes. We can have a bridge. The bridge builders are still contacting me on a regular basis. We can have, but, and also the Translink uh, service. So we need to look at, and as I've said, we will supply any operator and all the data that we have about alternate barge routes. They need to do their costings. It may not return sufficient to them. They need to do their costings. <coughs> Council shouldn't be running businesses. We don't run barges get tied up in all sorts of industrial relations with that. It may be too expensive. Victoria Point people are, are, would not be happy, but how do we resolve those issues? But it's certainly something we have to look at. We have to look at all of the options. Uh, we can't look at one. Then just uh, quickly, in terms of the integration of subsid subsidisation of water transport, we've actually, the state has done two studies. As I said, I was very disappointed they didn't have the study finished. I think they are at the point to, of saying we have this is the answer. I wanted them to do it before the election so we can hold both sides of politics to it. Uh, multi deck car park is definitely on the agenda. Definitely has to be viewed, along with all of the options. And I think, but we need to do some fair, mark, some fair identification, investigation of the other options, such as the alternate barge routes before we can make any long-term decision that's going to see an investment of some minimum of 40 to 50 million up to potentially, you know, how long is the bridge uh, to go to there. So that we have to look at those issues, but we have to do something in the interim.
And that, that project is a five to seven years that will increase the number of car parks to about 1,500. Similar approach in some instances by writing to the, uh, the then uh, Minister of Transport, Multicultural Affairs, and Satisfaction Palaszczuk in July last year. But um, my experience in dealing with ministers uh, normally do these things normally fall on their fears. But I basically outlined to her that if you do not get on board and subsidise TransLink, what you do is actually you exacerbate the other issues that we've talked about previously the social issues, the affordability issues. And if they don't deal with a subsidy, we're actually going to be paying a lot more as a nation or as a, as a state. And I outline that pretty clearly. And I think that goes back to what I'm saying about the sustainability as well. I've had various discussions with uh, private enterprise and uh, various stakeholders who may have a big or a private public partnership. Um, and clearly we need to have acceptable solutions for everyone involved, both at Wine Creek and here on the islands. But let me tell you, when the opposite said to me it would take three years for us to put the paperwork together for an EOI, my response to that officer was, those businesses might have come and gone by then. You cannot expect a business, a private enterprise, to wait three years or two years to come up with the framework for us to be able to work with. We have to cut through that you-know-what and make it happen. And there are ways of doing it. It happens in other parts of the state. It just takes a great deal of determination, knowing the right people and making it happen. Can I just say, in line with transport, what's really been important, and I've been listening to you now for over 12 months, is the issue of parking near your transport. And let me just tell you what's really important about what I have done, as I believe, as a reflection for the people of the Southern Morclay Islands, I have voted against every option that put forward paid parking for you on the Wine Creek foreshore. I've done that for a number of reasons. The first reason is that we would have an economic impact study that said it would partially affect a great percentage of you on these islands. Now, I have compassion and a heart for people who are struggling, and I've met many of them. So for that reason, that's one reason I could not support it. Secondly, governments should not be reducing a service and then charging you more for it. We are here to work for you and provide those services to a level that's sustainable, I agree. And you all have had paid parking at Wine Creek. The people who are in secured parking are happy with that. We shouldn't be playing around with ad hoc decisions now, spending $5 million on a band-aid solution which sees you driving in a shuttle bus with your groceries to a remote parking place yet to be advised yeah. and not yeah. even knowing... Yeah. <laughs> They wouldn't do it to any other community in Redland City, so they shouldn't be doing it to you. <laughs> so what will I do? Well, firstly, I will intervene to the best of my ability, as one of 11, to reverse any action taken by Council to reduce Cindy parking arrangements. And I won't waste any more money on remote parking, although I know it's with the delay in the election that some of that may be inevitable. I would rather save that $5 million than give you a permanent solution for the long-term outcomes for you and your children and grandchildren here on the Southern North Bay Islands. It seems to date that the state government does not see the population of the Southern North Bay Islands as being significant enough to subsidise you. Yes, they may have done the but we've been asking for this for quite some time. But what happens if we add the rest of Redmond City, three electorates, to the weight of that equation? In my discussions with TransLink, they are mighty keen to get councils to contribute in some form or fashion to public transport. In fact, they will give you $3 for every $1 that we give them. Now, I'm saying to you, if we go to the state government and to TransLink and we say, we will consider providing a contribution to public transport only if you firstly bring the Southern Morton Bay Islands and the Islands community into line with the rest of South East Queensland because you are part of South East Queensland yes. after all. Yes. So I'm saying to you that Redland City as a whole will benefit in two ways. We talked about sustainability. We talked about the fact that it costs us $10 million on the mainland to subsidise you, if that's how you want to put it. And if you start
start to make transport accessible, and the mayor is right. Once you can deal with transport on the islands, those perceptions will change, investment will come, and it will make it more sustainable. So we will, in fact, be saving money for the mainland if we start to address the transport needs. It's a win-win. We'll be saving money for the mainland by making you more sustainable, and we are actually giving them better services. So I say to you that if we contribute as a council to public transport, and we don't do it, until you guys are absolutely in line with the rest of South East Queensland. I think that will give them some incentive to get their act together and stop the letter writing business and actually get some action happening. Yeah. It's my intention to find operational savings that allow us to contribute to public transport, to leverage not only better public transport for Redlands, but on the condition that Simbi receive equal treatment to the rest of South East Queensland. Firstly, what I won't do is continue to support a temporary interim, which doesn't sound like it's interim anymore, a second, second best band-aid solution for Guanam Creek that, in my opinion, was adopted in a hurry for political expediency because this council had failed to meet its promises and during the course of this term it realised that the term was almost up and election was on its way and so we had to do something, albeit that it wasn't really the best outcome for the residents, in my opinion, of Southern North Bay Islands. Yeah. 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 Why am I doing this? Well, I'm an elected representative, I want to serve you, and it's my job to ensure that the people of the Bay Islands will be no worse off with the current parking arrangements that they have at Wyoming Creek. And that's what I will pledge to you, but on the condition, of course, that I have a supporting council, and that will be up to you and the rest of the city on the 28th.